You, my friend, have found yourself on the wrong side of TikTok. Body positivity was a movement that was designed to help liberate and uplift people in fat bodies. It was to help educate and empower people in fat bodies to be able to advocate for themselves when going to, say, the doctors. These people are very clearly really, really good at gaslighting because they make everything they say sound really, really good. But in the reality, it's just not the truth. Like, body positivity... The, the meaning of body positivity was never supposed to include fat people because the meaning of being fat is literally something that you can change. Sure, there might be some people in the world that don't have the ability to become unfat. Like, for instance, if you're heavily disabled or maybe you're in a circumstance where it's just not plausible for you to lose weight, which is very, very, like, few and far between. Usually it's the other way around. Usually you're in a situation, like, it's more often than not, you'll find yourself in a situation where you don't have enough food compared to being in a situation where you have too much food and you can't stop eating. Like, that's like more ridiculous than the other but body positivity was more so about accepting your body for the things that you cannot change so like if you have a missing leg or maybe that you're now uh i don't know maybe you have like a whole bunch of allergies or maybe you can't do certain things the way that you used to be able to do them that's more so what body positivity was about it's not so much about being fat and just accepting that you're fat that doesn't make any sense to me um you can be fat and accept that you're fat i personally don't have a problem with people being fat i more so have a problem with people being fat and then saying disgusting just just completely wrong stuff like the people in these videos do but anyway go off queen instead it's been thin washed by the media and thin washed is crazy dude often it's whitewashed i hear that one quite a bit and i know she can't say that because she is herself white so usually when people are a part of an organization and they don't want to <laughs> they don't want to say the thing that they know is true but they'll say something else kind of equivalent to that to try to make it seem like they're still a part of it but the reality of the situation is uh yeah whitewash would be the more appropriate station statement when going to say the doctors Instead, it's been thin washed by the media and it's been co-opted by thin white women. And or just thin, or just white women in general. Mm, thin white women, maybe just white women. Maybe that's more of a statement. I don't know why, like, do, you do realize you fit 50% of that. You do understand that, right? And thin is very subjective, especially if we're talking about people in the plus size community where literally mid size is a category and they don't even classify those people as fat. So I don't even understand if you would even be a part of that organization. To me... I think you qualify. I think you're the thin white woman within question. Why are you hijacking the body positivity movement, you thin white woman? I mean, obviously, she's not very thin, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it's just too easy for these people to just point out, like, isms or thin white women and, like, what, where, where, where does this ultimately serve? Because if you're sitting here and you're shitting on thin white women, which probably make up the majority of the population of all these, like, groups and things... You do realize that you're actively demonizing the main portion of your group, right? That'd be like if Disney came out and were like, oh, man, you know what? We really just hate, like, 45-year-old virgins that love Star Wars and buy all of our toys. And, you know, like, we, we just really don't like those greased-up guys. You're, you're actively demonizing your entire fan base at that point, right? Because that is what Star Wars' fan base is. Just older men that love collecting toys and spend, like, the entire day... Uh, you know, obsessing over whether or not bo boobs are real. So, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just to me, I don't, I don't know why they, they're so, they're so specific on the thin white women, but they never focus on the other aspects of white. Instead, it's Which I don't believe, by the way. Thin washed by the media, and it's been co-opted by thin white women. And, you know, that's fine. Everyone has hang-ups about their bodies. But, you know, um, if you're really just using body positivity and his excuse to be fat and lazy, like, they're in that basket, too. But this is just a little reminder that you don't know anything about my health. And you what the fuck, dude? Okay, just out of nowhere, too. Like, you don't know anything about my health? I, I don't like this claim because it's, like, the equivalent of somebody saying, like, you don't know anything about my... You don't know anything about my health, but, like, your arm is hanging off. And it's, like, spewing out blood like Quentin Tarantino movies, right? Like... Like, I understand what you're saying. You're saying that because you're fat, that doesn't directly mean that you have a problem due to your weight. But I'm going to say it right now, and I'm going to die on this hill. Simply having the weight on your body is an indication of poor health. And I understand that you don't think that way because uh, otherwise, obviously, you wouldn't have this stance. But it is. Being obese, being fat, I know this woman's obese, it's unhealthy. It's not good. It's literally a health effect. And I understand that you don't think it is, but it is. It's just no other way to say it than that. Like, you can say whatever the fuck you want to say, but obviously, it's not going to work. 
can't tell anything about a person's health just by looking at them. That's a crazy ass statement. I, I, I just I just really want to know like how deep that statement goes, like how much they actually believe that. Because in it within question here, it may work, but in like any other scenario, does it work? So like if somebody was walking down the street and like I said, their arm was hanging off, could you judge their health status based off that? You may not be able to judge all of their health statuses based off their arm hanging off like their arm hanging off is there but they also have diabetes and you can't tell whether or not that guy has diabetes or not sure i guess so but that doesn't that doesn't mean that you can't judge certain things about certain certain body types right that's that's a fucking terrible disgusting way of looking at it it's so reductionary too so Yes, you may not be able to like know whether or not that person has like diabetes or high blood pressure or like other underlying conditions, but I can judge that this person has obesity and obesity is a negative health effect on your body. So sure, I may not be able to guess all of them, which is a stupid ass way of saying anything, but I will be able to understand that this person is suffering a very, very, very fundamentally from the obesity zone. It's a very stupid point, but to be honest. But you don't know anything about my health and you can't tell anything about a person's health just by looking at them, nor can you tell how much exercise they do. Sure, but like, so what? Check your bias at the door. You you said nothing. Like, I, I don't know why these people think they slayed or they ate so much by saying literal nothingness. You didn't say anything, dude. All you said was, I, you don't know anything about me, even though you know stuff about me, but I'm going to say that you don't know anything about me. Therefore, leave your bias at the door. I guess, Slay Queen Edges, dude, you really fucking killed it, dude. You really, wow, you blew me away on that one, dude. Oh, okay. Here's how I started to fall in love with my body. First of all, I unlearned fat phobia, understood the mechanics of fat phobia, the purpose it serves, and who is benefiting. So from a logical perspective, I unlearned that shit. And who is it benefiting the most though? Like, because these people often say it's white men, I guess, or dudes like that are like at the very tippity top of buildings. It's just like these people in any other way would be like, the people that think that the ice is not real or like the earth is flat like these people are major conspiracy th conspiracy theorists and they always have a way to link it to something that is just like really really ridiculous in any other context it would never work but in here for some reason they think it's okay you know what i'm talking about these are literally like anti anti-vaxxers of their community but i mean they can say whatever they want and who is benefiting so from a logical perspective i unlearned that shit and saw through the racism and the capitalism and the oppression of it all what do you mean the racism and capitalism dude what you, I, you look i don't understand the racism argument i don't understand the capitalism argument even further because there would not be a fat problem if it wasn't for capitalism. There was it, That's literally the means to which you became obese to begin with. To unlearn your fat phobia, you had to be within a capitalistic country, such as America, Canada, or other like westernized countries. So if you're sitting here and you're saying that the reason why people are fat phobic is because of capitalism, but you became fat due to capitalism. I just fail to see how that makes any sense at all. Like, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you say that? How can those two things coexist simultaneously? I just don't understand. And I would love an explanation. They are so quick to point out capitalism, but they never go on why capitalism, dude. What about capitalism means that it's fat phobic? If anything, making food and making more food and making it cheaper to ensure that the people that buy it buy more of that food would mean that they support fatness more than they support anti-fatness. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are tons of like, there are tons of companies out there that incentivize weight loss and, and you know, like building muscle and other things like that. Like, sure. But what about like Uber Eats? What about like, I don't know, DoorDash? And you guys can say things like, oh, David, those aren't like direct companies. I get it. I understand. It's not like Kroger or something like that. I understand that. But indirectly, these companies are building a lot of money off the backs of obesity. People buying this shit day in, day out. And that's fine. I have no problem with Uber Eats. I think there's a place for it. But it's just very, very interesting to me how these people will sit there and shit on capitalism all day, never tell you why. And then like, they are literally the reason why they're fat. The reason why they're able to maintain such high body fat percentages is because of capitalism. I have no idea how they can't see that. And then also the racism argument is almost bottomless completely because they always go back to the same book of 
fearing the black body and that's just fucking bullshit because they think that black women are inherently big as fuck and then because of that if you try to lose weight you are inducing racism because weight loss is an indication of racism because white people are the only ones that could be i guess thin which doesn't make any sense at all bro look at the population of africa and tell me whether or not that shit's like fucking you know fat as fuck obviously crazy man then i the racism and the capitalism and the oppression of it all then i just I, I just wish that they would actually go into it i understand this is like a minute video but it's just so easy to just say these words and then just walk by them as if you didn't say anything at all that's why like when you see me talking about things i always try to give examples and i always try to preference stuff and i always try to like make sure that people understand what i'm saying like giving examples is always great this person just saying like oh it's because of capitalism white people racism things like that why or just why that doesn't make any sense at all dude please tell me how because like i don't get it it's too easy for you guys to just say those shits and just pass by like it's nothing the racism and the capital. like these are big claims these are big giant claims these are <laughs> this is an extremist view and i want to know how you got there and the oppression of it all then and by the way it's a very low-hanging fruit to be like oh it's capitalism it's racism Okay, bro. You and everybody else thinks like everything is due to those things. I started following lots of fat creators. I, when when I hear somebody say, look, when I got into Yu-Gi-Oh a few years back, right? I was into Yu-Gi-Oh when I was a kid, but I fell out of it because I was poor and I couldn't afford the card game. And then where there was some digital card games, I got back into it and I had to learn a lot of stuff. So I followed a whole bunch of people on YouTube and I was watching a whole bunch of content creators that made Yu-Gi-Oh that could help me play the game better and be better at that game, right? I don't count that as the same thing that these people are doing, okay? I look what I was doing as research, okay? And, you know, entertainment as well. These people are literally saying, like, I follow fat creators so I can imbue myself with more abilities to re reconfirm my biases that my body is okay. You understand? Like, if you're watching, like, a documentary on ancient Rome because you're, like, really, really interested in that shit and the tax code and, like, their, you know, the Third Punic War or whatever the fuck, then... I would not count that as like you reconfirming your bias, whether or not like ancient Rome was better than every other. Maybe it could be, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's such a weird way of looking at it. But these people saying this, make no mistake about it, is them just saying they can't handle the reality of situations. So what they do instead is try to find people that basically say the same thing as them so they can just hear the same shit. Make no mistake about it. Human beings are not truth seekers. Okay. Well, how human beings use truth is basically like this. Like you have your truth. You have truth. Okay. Fact. And you will use that fact, that truth, so long as it gets you what you know, what you want or it, like, progresses you. But once it doesn't progress you any longer, you'll stop using it. So, like, in this scenario, there are plenty of truths that would apply to this person. But they're just not going to use those truths because they know that if they did, it would not serve them. So, like, weight loss making you healthier is never something that they're going to do. And don't get me wrong. There's truth in everything that you're saying. Like, there is some truth. Like, oh, yeah you know, fat, fat bodies are, you know, I had to learn, learn my fat phobia. I'm sure everybody has some toxic fat phobic traits that are not good, but that's not objectively like the truth of the matter. You know what I'm saying? Like these people are living in a shell and they're just hearing exactly what they want to hear. They're just hearing their marching orders be echoed back and forth. And then they leave the internet and feel good about themselves for the next three hours and then go back and watch it again. Fat fitness, fat artists, fat educator, anybody that was fat and doing amazing things especially those fatties who were loving their bodies and not afraid to love every element and show it off. I'm talking people who love their roles, people who love their arms, people Ugh. who love their bumps. I don't even know why we are okay with having roles as a human being. It's such a crazy ass statement. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're fat, I'm not shitting on you. I just think it's interesting when people go, I love my roles. Why? What'd you do to achieve that shit? You just overate. Like, I, I don't understand how you could take so much pride in something that's literally easy to get. You know what I'm talking about? It'd be like a guy driving terribly <laughs> and like hitting a tree and going like, I'm proud of this, dude. Oh, I'm just so proud of what I did today. What do you mean you're proud of it, dude? You literally hit a fucking tree. You drive like shit. It's the same thing here. Like, how can you be proud of your fucking rolls? What did you do? You just ate like Oreos for 45 minutes, dude. What are you talking about? It's nothing, it's nothing like impressive about that. So like when people say like, I'm proud of this, usually it's like, oh yeah. My son, he just graduated from college with like a 5.0 GPA. I'm really proud of him. And the other guy goes, yeah, I'm proud. Yeah, man, I th that's a, such a great thing to be proud of. I'm proud of my fat rolls. 
okay, bro. Wow. You're like, it's, it's great. Like the comparison is awesome. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't, I just don't understand how they get there. Like why out of everything that you could be proud of the rolls on your body is just crazy. I just, I, I don't know how they get there. I'm talking people who love their rolls, people who love their arms, people who love their bums, people who love their tummies. And then I challenged myself to stop whenever I was in front of a mirror, look at myself and instead of tearing myself down, gaze at myself lovingly. <laughs> okay. I guess. Sometimes it's really beneficial to see things in your body that are very, very good. Like, I know sometimes I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, wow, my nipples are quite impressive. Wow, my biceps are actually bulging off of my skin right now. That looks really good sometimes, right? But like, it's okay to acknowledge some things about yourself that you don't like. You know, it's all right to go, oh, I have a little bit of like, you know, love handle on the side there. I got a little bit of front gut aside though, because I'm gonna work on that. Even if you don't want to work on it, it's okay to acknowledge it, at least. To sit there and say, I love that shit is like crazy, though. Until I could find the joy and love in my body. How long you looking in the mirror, dude? Damn, you got to be sitting in that mirror for like eight hours looking at that shit. Like, damn, that shit is really bubble belly big. Ugh, I got to find a joy in this, though, but I just really can't. I guess I can put like plates and forks on it and have it as like a platform to eat on, I guess, if you're looking at it like that. This might not seem like much to some people, but... I'm sitting in a pretty pretty public spot. And 444? Isn't that like a car? And I am enjoying the sun. And what is this right here on her lip? What is that shit? You just had some ice cream earlier? What is this right here? What is that? Like a sprinkle? Like a jimmy? In sweatpants. And Those are sweatpants? Can I go back? And I am enjoying the sun in sweatpants. Okay. And a sports bra. Okay. I see female presenting people constantly. That's such a cringy ass statement to say, bro. I'm sorry, dude. Female presenting people is just like, we're going too hard sometimes on that shit. The, the wording is just crazy, bro. I'm sorry, man. That shit is just cringe. Just in a sports bra and sweatpants. And I never think twice about it. But when I was like, you know what? I'm going to take my jacket off and enjoy the sun. I hesitated. I paused. And I paused because that is internalized fat phobia rearing its ugly head. It might just be because you're insecure about your big belly. Maybe. I don't know. Like, it, it seems like maybe you have some insecurity about it. I wouldn't call it fat phobia. Like, I understand why you're saying this shit, but usually the simplest solution is the one that's right. So you not want you hesitating to take off your shirt, probably because you know that there is something about you that is not appropriate compared to other bodies. And I'm not saying you can't do that. Like, it's fine. Go ahead and take off your shirt if you want to. But it's obvious that it's, it's probably just because you're insecure. And I don't know what for. You're turning heads when you walk through the door. Or, or, sorry about that. But you know what I'm talking about. It's just, it's probably insecurity. And I think it's important sometimes to call out those moments. To yourself though? Like, what do you mean call them out to yourself? Like, do, like scream at yourself like, this is wrong. Stop thinking like this. Stop being insecure about your gut. And then just take off your shirt. Like, what do we, is that what you're talking about? What do you mean call them out? By the way, guys, I have a hole in my shirt. Can you see it? Wait, is this the wrong one? No, wrong side. Yeah, I have a hole in my shirt. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna throw it away. I'm never gonna show away. I'm never gonna throw away my shirt. What are you gonna do? Challenge me on it. Challenge me. I'm so brave. That you struggle with that internalized fat phobia. Even if we don't think that we're still carrying it with us, it's there. You're carrying something, dude. There. And then it's also important to celebrate the fact that you didn't let it stop you. And that's progress. Well, sometimes you, you have no choice on letting it stop you. Sometimes it, it, the weight on your body is going to physically impede your ability to do certain things. But I guess like if you, know, you want to live your life on literal hard mode, all the time and just have like consistent problems and always be always thinking about like is this the right move am i doing something wrong is this like gonna negatively affect me can i even walk up these stairs why am i breathing so hard like it's fine to go i can still do these things even though i'm 300 pounds like that's great but why the fuck would you ever want to do those things while 300 pounds like i just like it's awesome it's so motivating to see that you're 300 pounds and you took off your shirt that's good that's awesome but like the way you're thinking about it is so, it's so ridiculous. Like, why would you ever want to be put in a classification like this? Couldn't you just lose the weight and be in a better situation and not have the weight actually negatively affect you? Celebrate the fact that you didn't let it stop you. And that's progress. And this is like maybe a controversial take, but I don't think that 
the majority of fat people, until you learn about body liberation and body positivity, no one would choose to continue to be fat in a world where they absolutely hate fat people. There's no inherent value in, in even being fat in general, especially if you're talking about being in a society. There might be like some limited value if you were trapped somewhere and you couldn't get any food or maybe you were born like 200,000 years ago where you were like sucking off woolly mammoths or trying to domesticate a sheep. But back then, it was like obvious that you needed extra fat on your body for that particular reason. But nowadays, there's plenty of food. We're using less and less farmland to make more and more food and in an economy where food is relatively cheap and people make enough money for that food, you should not be doing, you should not be eating in excess. It's obvious that these people are like, you know, they're consuming way too much. And I get it. I understand like food is awesome. Food is great. Food tastes really good. I understand that. But to a certain degree, these people need to practice self-control. Like it's, I don't understand like why you guys would choose this as the goal. Like this out of everything is just crazy. People think that I'm glorifying obesity by spreading this. Mm -hmm. It is basically glorification of, of obesity. If you're sitting there and you're telling people like, oh, there is value in being fat. It's good to be fat. It's beautiful to be fat. That is glorifying obesity. I don't you know, like that. That is plain and simple. Like I understand, like we should all acknowledge through and through that being fat n is not good. But these people, for some reason, don't see it that way, and they want to preach the good word of fatness, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But just like, you know, there's gonna be there's gonna be pushback. Just expect it. Word and like telling everybody about this information. I trust me. I wouldn't recommend anybody be fat in this world because of the health complications, right? Obviously, the health complications. It is horrible. Yeah. It is so traumatizing. It is so isolating. People are evil they are cruel it's like everything is external it's never themselves like when they when they when they have these problems it's like everybody treats me badly this is my problem not me having this issue no 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 it's everyone else saying that i am the problem therefore it's them it's not me and i think people got to be really careful in these particular types of ideologies like there should be some degree of accountability some degree of looking inwards because if it's this easy to like blame your problems on everyone else it's just you, then you have to know that your shit is a facade strangers think it's okay to tell you on the bus mm -hmm. you're fat you should lose weight you're who, who was saying that like what did you struggle to get on the bus like did you struggle is it the bus driver like damn bro um do you like this is actually incredible that you're this fat and you cannot you could can barely take up you barely take up two two seats is, is, is you're taking up two seats and there's a wheelchair user and like you can't stand up that's an issue maybe if the bus driver said that but like who is saying that on the well i've had a few experiences on the bus of somebody like i remember one time i had this guy ask me if i wanted to buy weed on the bus i've had a few times where gay men approached me on the bus and they were trying to solicit dick suck in their direction meaning like they wanted to suck me off which is very kind to be honest like that's way better than asking somebody hey do you want to suck me off so that's okay, but uh, no, I, I disagree fundamentally, dude. This is it's such a crazy ideology. Disgusting. Like, it's nonstop, and that leads to people isolating themselves and, like, seeking comfort through food. I mean, she's probably right about that one, but let's get into the Reddit posts. Hate to break it to you, but being thin is some, isn't something to be proud of or brag about. It's just luck or no, a non-accomplishment. Bro. In a world where food is relatively cheap and accessible to almost everybody, at least in the Western eyes, in the Western world, and you're telling me that it's not an accomplishment to stay thin, literally you have so many opportunities to buy foods and high calorie foods at that, that do make you fat quite quickly, and you're telling me that it's not an accomplishment? Where is the alternative though? Is it an accomplishment to be fat? Is it not an accomplishment to be fat? Like, how are you looking at this exactly? Because one, that's like saying like, big penises are also small penises, and that you shouldn't look at as an accomplishment. Like, is is having a small penis an accomplishment? Like, how do we look at that exactly, dude? Are you saying that being fat is an accomplishment? How does this work exactly? And by the way, it is 100% an accomplishment. There might be some luck in it in the sense of, like, maybe you're a smaller person inherently. But even then, it's very easy to out-eat that particular type of aspect. It's very easy to out-eat your genetics. So, no, nah, I, don't, I don't agree. I think that if you're thin, good for you. You're very healthy. That's okay, right? This really can't be said enough. There is no good reason to comment on somebody's body. It's none of your business. 
like I, I don't know if these people are dumb, but there's entire industries dedicated to the judgment of people's bodies, like modeling, the bodybuilding competitions. Like we have tons and tons and tons of places out there that are dedicated to that particular aspect. And then also there is a lot of value in the way that somebody looks like, do you not find the person that you're with to be attractive? You do realize the way you get to that attraction is by judging other people's bodies and comparing and contrasting certain things and going, well, this is more attractive compared to this is, and I like this more. You do understand that, right? You're judging somebody else's body. You're just like, do you look at people and not find attraction? Is that what you're saying? That's dumb. That's stupid. Like when you look at a car, for instance, and you see one car compared to another car, are you not looking at certain features about that car and judging them based off their attraction levels? No, this is a dumb point. There is a lot of value in judging on somebody else's body. It's completely fine to do that. Like people do it all the time. So no, I, I disagree. That's crazy, actually. I don't eat. Fill in the blank for health reasons. It's not a flex you think it is. Keep your restrictions to yourself, please and thank you. It, it just depends on what you mean. I don't think many people even brag about that unless somebody asks them. It's always better to show instead of tell. But if you ask somebody like, hey, what's something that you don't eat? And they go, oh, I don't eat donuts or I don't eat cake or I don't eat this, I don't eat that. That's okay to do because a lot of those things are probably low and probably high in calorie. Like for instance, I don't drink soda. And I know that because drinking soda is literally nothing it's just liquid with tons and tons and tons of calories and it's not even optimal liquid at that it's just certified liquid which i know i'd get better nutrition from the food that i would eat as opposed to the liquid that i'm drinking and the calories in versus calories out from liquids is terrible so nah i always like incentivize people to drink water by the way drink water today water is great water is amazing water is lubrication lubricate yourself excessively so there is that right um, yeah, the, 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 just because, like, this is why I always say, like, when these people talk about, you know, restrictions, they're literally talking about how you don't drink soda, which is really fucking crazy. PSA, you don't actually have to tell other people what you think of their bodies. It's okay to keep that to yourself. It is okay to keep it to yourself, but it's also fine if you want to tell people about how they look, especially if there are people around you, uh, people that you know, things like that. It's okay to not do those things. So, I mean, I guess it's like, it's an okay opinion. If you think you need to lose weight for your health, ask yourself honestly, has this ever worked for me? Have I ever been able to lose weight and keep it off? How do these repeated efforts to lose weight impact me? If you're somebody that struggles with weight loss and you consistently try to lose weight, but you never actually succeed on the weight loss front, that's not an excuse to not do it again. Like a lot of people do very, very, very bad weight loss techniques. I've met so many people that go, I'm never going to try to lose weight again because when I did try to lose weight, it was terrible for me. Like I was, and I always ask them like, okay, what did you do? And they always go like, I fasted for like five days and it was unsustainable or I was used to eating three or 4,000 calories a day and I went down to literally 1,100 and it was not sustainable for me. And I'm like, always think like, yeah, no shit, dude. Why the fuck would you go down to that far? Like you're doing drastic things. Of course, you're not going to get the results that you want because you're going from zero to 100 in like one day. So yes, it's very, very jarring for a lot of people and the shock of keeping that weight on your body and the shock of like doing these like advanced techniques. It doesn't work for like 99% of people. That's why I always like, like advocate for slow and steady. And if you're going to lose weight, do it very, very sustainably. Don't just like go dive into the deep end and expect you to like, you know, come out swimming on the other side. If you can't swim, it's all right. You'll learn eventually. Fat people deserve to be treated with respect. And I'm guessing this is like the fat on your back or whatever, dude. Dude, this head is really small, bro. Am I wrong? Why is this head so goddamn small? Fat people deserve to be treated with respect for some reason. Even like just because you're fat, I'm guessing, which is crazy. Nobody deserves anything. You you earn the respect, by the way. You don't just get the respect. Like I always try to treat everybody with a baseline of respect. Like I always try to make sure I'm nice to almost everybody, but don't expect to be treated kindly just because you exist. That's crazy. Like I'm an anomaly. You should not just expect to be treated with respect. That's crazy. Okay, fat people deserve autonomy over medical choices. I have no idea what that means. Like, I'm guessing, like, you deserve to make your own decisions, medically speaking, which is ridiculous because why the fuck would you expect to have that happen? If you're very fat, you're not going to be able to get certain procedures or certain devices to be, to, to, to be used on you because you may outweigh those particular devices. That's dumb. Um, fat people deserve love and healthy relationships. 
I don't even, you don't even have a healthy relationship with your own mouth. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about having a healthy relationship. You don't deserve to have a healthy relationship. I, what, what do you even mean by that? No, uh, you have to work for that. If you, it, regardless of whatever path you're taking, if it's friendship or a relationship in terms of like, you know, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend type thing, you have to work for those things. It takes effort. It takes a lot of deliberate work. So no, that's ridiculous. No, no one deserves a relationship. And if you think you do, you're dumb. That's stupid, okay? You're going into it with a wrong headspace, okay? You work for that shit. Fat people deserve access to everything. Uh, what do you mean by everything, dude? Like, all the stuff? Do you deserve to play pickup cards? Like, do you deserve to walk down the street? Like, what do you mean access to everything? Please be specific on this. Fat people deserve sex, joy, and embodiment. Sure. I mean, if you want to have sex and joy, but like, what do you mean sex? Like, what do you, how are you entitled to it? Like, what do you mean you deserve it? What the fuck are you even talking about? This is the most incel shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. What do you mean you deserve it? How? Where are you going to get it from? Don't you need somebody else to consent to that? No? Is that not something you have to consent to? Sex? Okay? Joy? I don't, I guess you can get enjoyment from doing a lot of things. Like, I get enjoyment from drinking water or, like, playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I guess. Like, maybe you can get it from that. I don't fucking know. Embodiment? I don't even know what that is. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Now, these people always say the most ridiculous shit, bro. <laughs> All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I'd appreciate for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of that stuff, I would appreciate you tremendously. If you watched the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in mustache because I'm currently wearing a mustache. And I also have a pack of mustaches right here. I should probably change Davina's mustache. I feel like she's been wearing the one that she's been wearing for a long time. So maybe we'll change her mustache sometime soon. But regardless, you're a beautiful specimen of human being. I love, care, and I enjoy you to a degree that's probably unhealthy, but we're not going to talk about that because I do care for you, honestly, deeply, and it's, it's probably, you might not like the way I like you, but I like you a lot, and it's so much. It, it is like the entire spectrum of me to enjoy you in many, many different ways, and I care, and I care, and I care for you every all the times. Anyway. Um, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord. It'll be all linked in the description of the, for the video and the description of the channel. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.